Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah boys and girls of grade 12 we will continue our online lessons uh, and in, in the previous video we discussed the Millikan's experiment and we covered the tools the objectives and the observations we discussed the seven ob uh, observations of uh, Millikan's experiment and we covered them all and we said that in the in this video we're gonna discuss the explanation part but before we start with the explanation part we're gonna discuss the classical physics and the einstein theory which we are gonna start with to today inshallah the classical physics assumes that when you have a light source and you aim it into a metal surface the 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 light energy will be converted into heat energy given to those electrons of the metal surface those electron of the metal surface will take this heat energy and convert it into kinetic energy so they will vibrate faster and by continue aiming with the light uh, the electron will the, the 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 surface electrons will continue to get extra energy until the time they have the kinetic energy that can exceed the the bonding energy so when the kinetic energy is greater than the bonding energy those electrons will escape from the metal surface and this process actually takes time so this is what this is the the uh, the classical physics approach which is we will say it's it's not enough to explain what's really happening and it has its own disadvantages that we will discuss just a little bit later in the second approach which is the einstein theory actually einstein assumed that the light it's a composition of small particles he named them as what well, as photons those photons has energy or an integer amount of energy which is named by uh, by blank as a quanta so those quanta of energy or the energy of photon it's equal to h f the h it's the blanks constant f is the frequency so einstein used the 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 blanks quantization of of energy and he says that each proton has a quantized energy this photon will hit each photon will hit one electron so this photon when it hit the, the electron if it, this photon has more energy than the bond energy of the electron the the electron will escape from the, the metal surface and the remaining energy will be given to the electron as what as kinetic energy so uh, the photon energy will submit its total energy into the electron the electron will take this energy if it's greater enough to 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 escape it out of the the atom this one will be called as what the metal work function so the work function it's the required energy for an electron to escape from the surface and this is hf it's the photon energy as we discussed earlier and the remaining energy so this is the total energy okay of the photon the photon will give some of the energy into the metal to to escape the electron or to, to it will give this energy to the electron to escape from the metal and what remained else it will be given as a kinetic energy for the electron so for a photon you need only this one or this amount of energy which is the work function to escape the electron out of the atom if the electron has extra energy it will be given as a kinetic energy if there is no extra energy the electron will be in its uh, position out of the surface so this is called what einstein equation of photoelectric effect which he got a nobel prize about this explanation and according to 
Einstein, this is need no time. And he also mentioned the frequency, which is not mentioned in the in the classical physics. And we will see how this can help us into to 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 explain what to explain uh, to explain uh, Millikan's experiment. And uh, now we are gonna discuss the seven observations, and then we will explain them, and we will see what do they agree with the classical physics and Einstein theory or not. Let's start with the first observation, which was about the current increases whenever you have light intensity increase. So the explanation of this one. It says that by increasing the light intensity, if you increase the intensity of the light, the number of ejected electrons will be increased. So since the ejected electrons or the photoelectrons increases, so this will give us what? A higher current. So the current will be increased. And we can note that both classical physics and Einstein theory agrees with this result. Has So... Uh, they have no problem with this one let's move to the second observation which is about the uh, current increases when you have a, f a potential of the photo cell increase actually in this one we discuss it in three positions the first position this is the figure that shows this part or this observation we discuss it whenever the potential is the, the potential the, or the voltage is zero what will happen to the, the current it's not zero so it has a value then it's increased up to saturation current and if we do the opposite of the voltage or we oppose the battery reverse the battery the, the potential will be reversed and the current will be decreased up to a uh, specific value of voltage or potential and the current will become zero this is called stopping potential so we can discuss it in three terms three points the first one when the potential is zero the current is non zero why because the photo electron so the current will be it will, it will it's, more, it's not zero because the current that comes from the photo electrons the second explanation it's when the potential increases the current increases up to specific value which is the the saturation current or the the current will saturate or will be constant why because the potential will speeds up the photoelectrons which cause the current to increase but this increase will be up to specific value this value when the photo cell can receive all the photo electrons so you have uh, this photo cell or the cathode and the anode they can receive all the photo electrons and whatever you increase the voltage uh, the current will not increase anymore because of what because the 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 anode can receive all of the photo electrons so there is no more uh, photo electrons no increase in the number this will give us what will give us the same the same value of the current which is saturation current if we reverse the battery the potential will be decreased and this will cause what the current to to decrease this decrease of the current will last for uh, some time until it reach zero and until it becomes zero. At this point, the potential can stop the fastest photoelectron. What do we mean by the fastest photoelectron? It means the highest kinetic energy photoelectrons. So when the photoelectrons, uh, the highest photoelectrons, the highest kinetic energy photoelectrons can be stopped by the potential this potential is named as the stopping potential since it can stop the highest kinetic energy photoelectrons so it can stop every photoelectrons which make it no current will pass anymore so this one called stopping potential 
actually if we can uh, see what's their their uh, explanation in the classical physics and the Einstein theory we can notice that the classical physics did not mention something called saturation current so we have no term such saturation current in classical physics so this is called what this is means that this is a disadvantage in in classical physics why because the classical physics it predicts that the current will continue to increase as much as the intensity increase for infinity so this graph should be similar to this graph up to infinity no curving like that okay in the classical uh, physics but in the einstein theory he explained it very well and as he says that what the the energy of the photon will be given to uh, the metal and the rest will be given as the rest of the energy will be given as kinetic energy okay so this is the let's move to the third observation the third observation in millikan's experiment it was about the saturation current will be increased by increasing the light intensity and we, we can explain this one by saying that when the light intensity increases the number c when you discuss the number it means that you discuss what the current so the current it it's related to the number of photoelectrons so when the number of photoelectrons increases this will cause the current to increase but when the current the, the number of the, the those electrons increases it will increase as a result of it will increase the saturation point or the saturation current okay but we can see in this observation that the stopping potential does not affected by the current intensity or the light intensity see this is the the different intensities by increasing the intensity the car the saturation current will increase you can see the level of the current whereas the potential stopping potential it's the same for the three intensities why because the the light intensity increases the number but does not increase the uh, does not increase the energy of the electrons so this cause what the required potential to stop them it's similar for each of them but the saturation current will increase because the number of the the electrons photo electrons will be increased in the classical physics has as we discussed earlier that it has no such a thing called saturation current so it cannot explain this one because of this this disadvantage whereas einstein theory can explain it very well because we can see it as we discussed earlier uh, in the fourth observation we say that the stopping potential increases when you increase the the frequency you can see here we have different frequencies the stopping potential increase with increasing the light frequency but the saturation current is the same let's discuss the explanation for this part by increasing the light frequency the energy of the electrons the photoelectrons increases in the previous uh, observation we said the number of photoelectrons increase by increasing the light intensity here we say that the energy of the photoelectrons increases by increasing the the frequency where we said from einstein theory that the energy of the photon it's equal to hf f is the frequency so by increasing the frequency the energy will be increased so here we said that the higher uh, since the, the 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 photoelectrons has higher energy or higher kinetic energy it needs higher potential to stop it that's why we have what well we have increasing stopping potential by increasing the frequency and the current intensity has no no relation with it because 
sorry the 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 uh, the saturation current has no relation with the free light frequency because the the number it will be the same the number of the photoelectrons in this part again the classical physics has no explanation for this part because it's it says that no or it didn't mention the frequency and it assumed that no the frequency has no effect on the experiment okay whereas einstein theory explained it very well because it mentioned the frequency in the equation of einstein the fifth observation which is about each metal has a certain needed energy to emit electrons yes in the the the, the electrons are bonded to their metals with different energy according to the atomic number so by different atomic number we have different metals thus each metal has or needs a specific energy to eject electrons from its surface this energy named as a work function so the work function it's the energy required to em to eject the electron from the metal surface and this work energy or work function it has it's associated with the specific frequency this frequency is named as what threshold frequency the threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of the light in order to what to eject the electrons out of the metal surface uh, this this part of the the millikan's experiment couldn't be explained by by classical physics because again the frequency is not mentioned in this uh, in this theory and the einstein theory explain it very well since the frequency is mentioned there and before the last which is the sixth observation which is about the time required to eject electrons from the metal surface it should be very small or neglected or ignored why because since the photon has the required energy to eject the electron from the metal surface it will eject the electron with no time with time in in the nanosecond so the scale will be in the nanosecond which is uh, uh, less than a blink of, of an eye so it's a so small time okay uh, actually the classical physics disagree with this this observation why since the the classical physics assumed that the the light energy needs time to heat up the electrons in order to eject them out to to supply them with enough energy to escape from the metal surface which is this is considered as the disadvantages for classical physics whereas the the, the or nevertheless the the einstein theory agrees totally with this result since it says that the the photon energy if it's uh, more than the the work function the electron will escape with no time the last observation which is the main important uh, observation which says that the photoelectronic kinetic energy increases by increasing the light frequency this you can see that by increasing the light frequency the photons energy increase since the photons energy increase it will has more energy so the some of this energy will be given as a work function to escape the electron from the metal the rest or the extra energy will be given as what as a kinetic energy for the electrons this uh, again it's not covered in the classical physics since since the frequency is not included in the explanation whereas the the, the einstein mentioned it clearly in the equation this is the um, the photon energy it will be given into it will, will be distributed into uh, into types of energy the first energy will be 
to to cancel the bond of the electron and the second it's as kinetic energy for the the electrons that's all for uh, this topic we finished unit 6 or the required bus of unit 6 we still have uh, to practice how to use this equation in the calculations part and we will have some equations or some uh, exercises to practice uh, i hope you enjoy those parts guys and uh, please please don't hesitate if you have any question don't hesitate to ask me through the whatsapp channel see you guys all the best